All right, have your supplements out. Open to page 36. Yesterday, we began talking about protection against loss, and that was the first term that I asked you on page 36. What is the general term for protection against loss? Jalen? Insurance. Insurance. And we're going to talk about all different types of insurance. I don't know if you've peeked ahead at all, but we're going to talk about car insurance. We talked about that yesterday. We talked about home insurance, life insurance, health insurance, all these different things. All of them, though, it's protection against loss. It's the, what if something bad happens, I don't want to have big money expenses, right? Um, I was talking with somebody not long ago, and their house burned down. Um, I think it was somebody that uh, Emma knows, and uh, some friends of hers, and she was telling us that in Bible class. And what if that happened, right? Lightning strikes happen, tornadoes are not that uncommon, especially this time of year around here. What if something happened, right? You just want the peace of mind knowing if it happened, I'd obviously be sad, it would be tragic, prayerfully everybody's safe, but at least I know that somebody's going to help take care of getting a house rebuilt, or help me get a new car, or um, I'm not going to have huge medical bills to have to pay, or um, for instance, if I die, my family's going to be cared for financially, even though I'm not there to work and make money to take care of them, right? All of that, that's the overarching idea of insurance. Protection class against loss. loss, specifically financial loss. Now, number two, someone who purchases, and this goes for more than just car insurance, but someone who purchases insurance to pay for damages that could occur to his vehicle, okay, in, en in general, anybody who purchases insurance is referred to as what, Kirsten? Policy holder. The policy holder, because, number three, the agreement between the vehicle owner and the insurance company, in general, agreement between customer and any insurance company, is called the? Insurance policy. The insurance policy, good. So, protection against loss class. Insurance. The agreement between the purchaser and the insurance company is the insurance, insurance policy. policy. And the person who buys the insurance is called the because they hold the policy. I mean, if they want to, they can hold it. Number four, the amount of money the vehicle owner must pay up front for repairs to his vehicle. What's that upfront amount called? It's not a down payment, though it sounds like a similar definition. Ben? Deductible. The deductible. How many had deductible? That's an important term to know for all forms of insurance. Deductible is you got to pay this first. And once you've paid this, insurance will pay everything else. Okay, that's the deductible. What is a payment for car insurance called, Bryson? Mm -hmm. A premium. Good. Number six, insurance coverage for your own vehicle if you cause an accident. Kirsten? Uh, collision. Collision. Collision covers you if you cause the accident. You're covered by a collision. If you hit a deer, the collision policy covers that because you hit the deer. Um, you might say, well, the deer ran out in front of me. Yeah, but we can't, we can't penalize the deer. He's dead now um, or badly wounded. So we got to get it out of you. So your collision covers you. Number seven, coverage for the other person's vehicle if you cause an accident. Joel? Liaison. Not liaison, but it kind of starts the same way. You could argue the insurance company is kind of a liaison between you and the other person. They don't sue you. They get the money out of the insurance company. Um, Corey? Liability. Liability insurance. Um, but hey, that, what that shows, though, is you did it without looking back, right? Which is, which is awesome. So, and you were close. Liability. Make sure you get that word. Number eight, coverage for your car from accidental damage not caused, and it should actually more accurately say here, not caused by a vehicular accident, okay? But it's not caused by another vehicle. It's a tree. It's a storm. It's hail. Something like that for redemption. Joel? Um, comprehensive. Comprehensive coverage. Good. Comprehensive coverage. How many got all eight of them correct? Did anyone get all eight correct without looking back? Okay, all right. Uh, that's okay. It's okay to look back as long as we're getting them. Well, let's take a look at the problems here. And you were doing these on paper. Again, we're taking a break yesterday, taking a break today. Next week, we'll get back to the calculator. I want to give you some practice doing it on paper, working out these math problems. Don't want your skills to get rusty. Read number nine for us, if you would, Luciana. Sammy had an old car to farm a how do I find percent of increase class? Yeah. All right, so what's the change here, Luciana? $90 to $126. What's the change? 
36. 36, right? That goes, she, the, her policy, her premiums are about to go up $36 a month. Now we're going to compare that to the class original. original. What was the original premium, Luciana? 126, 90. 90, right? The 126 is the new premium. 90 is the old premium. That's the original premium. I don't want to divide three, th uh, 36 by 90. Um, let's reduce it. What can I divide out of both numbers, class? Three. three. I can do better than three. Six. I see nine times tables here, don't you? Oh. oh. Yeah, 36 divided by nine, class? Four. Four. 90 divided by nine? Ten. Wait, what is four tenths as a decimal? Point four. Point four. That's what tenths means, is that first decimal place. Then we go, point, point. class, we get exactly 40%, 40 increase in her premiums. Why? Because she's got a nicer, newer car. It's going to be more expensive for the insurance company to pay for this new car, right? If it were to get wrecked. So they have to increase the premiums because they aren't about to lose money. Uh, number 10, how much will Sandy pay each year for insurance on her new car? What do I need to do here, Griffin? Um, multiply the 126 times 12. There we go, she's gonna pay $126 every month. That's her monthly premium. So in a year, we multiply by 12 and we get what for our answer, sir? $1,512. $1,512, how many had that answer? 1,000, now think about this. What if you drove, paid the same premiums for 10 years? Because that's easy math. 10 years, how much would you have paid to the insurance company? 15,120, 15, right? Just yeah. point over one place with a zero. And so I mean, that's a lot of money the insurance company makes. They're banking, by the way, on for every driver who does get in an accident, there's a lot of drivers who aren't getting in accidents. And they collect all the money from all these people so that they have the money to then pay others. Does that make sense? What's going to happen when the rapture happens? and a whole bunch of Christians driving their cars, there's gonna be a whole lot of car accidents all at once. What's gonna happen to the insurance companies? I don't know, I'm not gonna be here to find out. Uh, let's take a look at number 11. Um, go ahead and read that for us, Elaine. <clears throat> Sandy was planning to sign a policy that featured, that's the right one, right? Mm -hmm. That featured a $500 deductible for collision and comprehensive coverage. If she increases the deductible to $1,000, her monthly premium would be $119. How much would she save in two years on her policy if she is accident-free? All right. So, remember I told you you can customize your policy. You can choose whatever deductible you want within reason. They have different levels of deductibles, right? For instance, the deductible, remember, class, that's how much you pay up front if you cause the accident. Insurance takes care of everything else. Wouldn't it be nice, class, if you got in an accident to only pay like 250 bucks and then you're done and insurance does everything else? You know what they're going to do if you sign up for a $250 deductible? Raise those premiums. Whereas, if you say, you know what, if I cause an accident, I'll pay the first thousand. Well, they're going to lower your deductible. They're going to lower your premiums because they're not going to have to pay as much if you cause an accident. Does that make sense? So, she's thinking, hmm, I was going to do a $500 deductible. And that was going to cost $126. She's like, well, I really... 126 is a lot of money. What if I raise the deductible to 1,000? Insurance will lower my premiums, right? It says it'll lower the premiums down to what again, Elaine? To um, 119. 119. So how much will she save every single month if she goes with the higher deductible? At class? Mm -hmm. How much will she save every month if she goes with the high deductible? That's how much she pays a month. She was going to pay 126, remember? This is what she signed up to pay if she does the 500 deductible, right? $7? She's going to save 7 bucks a month. Does everyone understand that? This is with a $500 deductible. She's like, 126 is a lot of money. I'm used to paying 90 remember? That's what she'd been paying was 90 a month. And she's like, 126 just seems so steep. Let me play with the numbers here. So she plays around with it a little bit, finds out she goes with a $1,000 deductible. It's only 119 per month, right? Do you see that she would save $7 every month if she goes with a higher deductible? You all got that? Now, it says how much would she save in two years if she's accident free? 
Well, every month class, you're saving how much? Seven. 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 So for two years, how many months is that? 24. 24. So if we multiply this by 24, how much does she save? Ben, figure this out with me real quick. Over the course of two years. Uh, Seven times four? Class? 28. 28. Carry the 2, Ben. 7 times 2. 14. Plus 2. 16. 16. So, class, over two years, she would save how much money? $168. We don't sneeze at $168. Bucks. That's a lot of money, isn't it? But, number 12 says, how much would Sandy lose by increasing her deductible if she caused an accident after one year? Well, take one year later, class. One year in. Every month she's been saving how much? No, every month she's been saving how much? Seven bucks. Okay, so if one year passes, she hasn't saved 168 yet. That was two years, remember? But if she causes an accident after one year, how much has she saved on her premiums? $84, right? Seven times 12 is $84 saved. But she increased the deductible, right? If she kept the deductible here, how much would she have had to pay? 500. 500. But she went with a thousand dollar deductible. So how much does she have to pay? Thousand. The first thousand. She suddenly she saved eighty four bucks over the course of the year, but then she causes the accident and she spends how much more on her deductible? No, this isn't what her actual deductible is, but it was going to be 500. So how much more is her deductible than what it would have been? 500. It's 500 more. So she lost five hundred dollars by increasing the deductible. She saved 84 to lose 500. Did she end up gaining or losing on that deal, class? Losing. She ended up losing. Raising your deductible really high is a great idea to save money. As long as you don't cause any accidents. But Sandy, if this happened to her, if this had taken place, yeah, she saved money all year. $84, great. But she ended up losing 500 extra on that deal, didn't she? So what did she end up actually losing? What's the net loss here? No, no, she saved the 84, right? This is good. This is bad. You don't add them together. She didn't lose the 84 and lose the 500, class. She lost 416 on this deal. Think of this as a positive number. That's money she saved. Think of this as a negative number. Subtract, keep the sign of the greater. She lost 416. Do those two problems make sense now? Yeah. My goal was to get you to think through them. Even if you didn't get it right, think through them so we could talk about them today and they would make more sense now. This is the kind of finagling you do when you set up your policy. You think through, okay? Am I in a risky area? Do I ever have to drive in an area that's high risk? Do I drive around people who are high risk, like birthday girl? Um, do I, you know, stuff like that, right? But if you're like, honestly, I live out in the country. I don't really drive at night much where I'm gonna hit deer. I don't drive in a high traffic area. I'm a good driver. I don't drink. I don't get high. I really don't see why I would be causing an accident, more than likely. Why not go with the high deductible and just plan to be really safe? But if you live in the big city, and there's crazy traffic around you all the time, and you're having to make turns sometimes, we've got one particular turn we have to do out of our neighborhood that's not the world's greatest turn to have to take, okay? My wife got in an accident once there, and I've had a couple close calls. Maybe the high deductible's not the best idea because you know it's a matter of time before you've gone to bed in an accident. Okay, so maybe you pay a little more every month so when the accident happens, your deductible's lower. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of things you'll get to think about as you reach adulthood in just a few more years. But I want to kind of help get you thinking that way now. Number 13, a uh, little bit longer problem here. Let's have Jalen read it for us. Most insurance plan liability, liability coverage pay for up to $100,000 per person in medical expenses, bodily liability, for a person you might injure with your vehicle. <clears throat> if you pay, only pay for this required coverage, you are paying $86 per month. How much, would, uh, how much could you sa still save if you drove safely for 20 years before causing an accident? All right, so here's the idea. One of the things that your insurance covers is the medical bills of somebody you hurt, okay? So you cause an accident, somebody has to go to the hospital, they got a broken leg, all that jazz. Your insurance will pay up to $100,000 for that person's medical care. 
Now, if their medical care costs more than that, you may still be liable for a lawsuit. But most of the time with the way health insurance works, and yeah, usually the, it's, it's not going to be that high in most common accidents. There, there are some weird ones. There are some bad ones. I had a young lady years ago. Her mom got in a really bad accident. Um, but um, that's what insurance is willing to pay for. Well, here's the thought. Let's suppose you just get the bare minimum coverage liability. You don't get collision for your own car because you don't have to. You don't get comprehensive for your car because you don't have to. You have to have liability, so you do. And so you pay how much a month in problem number 13, Jalen? Um, I wrote that out, sorry. How much per month are you paying? Pay attention now, I know it's Friday, we're tired. How much a month are you paying for this baseline liability only coverage? $86 a month. 86 a month, okay, so $86 a month, class, how many months in a year? 12. So you, see, you notice we do a lot of multiply by 12 here, right? Mm -hmm. When we multiply by 12, call it out to me once you've got it. 1,032. So I heard a 1,032, and let me fact check that. Yes, 1,032 every year. We all good? Mm -hmm. And let's say you drive safely, it says, for 20 years. Well, now what do I do? Times 20. Times 20. Well, times 2. I'm going to hang the 0, right? So there's my 0. We multiply the 2 plus 2 times 2? Two. 4. 2 times 3? 6. 2 times 0? Zero. 0. 2 times 1? Two. 2. You could end up paying, over the course of 20 years, $20,640 to this insurance company, and you've never had an accident. But what if... After 20 years of safe driving, you hit somebody, and insurance pays out $100,000 for that person's medical bills. That's $100,000 you didn't have to spend, right? Mm -hmm. After years and years and years of paying thousands of dollars to insurance, you just saved money. And you saved a bunch, didn't you? At your seats, if you didn't already get it, how much do you save by having that insurance coverage. Bryson's already got it. The rest of you subtracting now. Go ahead, Bryson. Uh, you say 350? Uh, I got 360. 79,000, really close, but right idea. $79,360. And do you see why, even if you say, I'm a safe driver, why do I have to have insurance? That's why. Does that make sense? And so this is something I have to remind myself of because there are times when paying your premiums feels like a waste of money. Why do I have to do this? I don't cause accidents. My house isn't gonna burn down. I'm probably not gonna die in the next 10 years. I don't really ever go to the hospital or need any medical care. What if, right? What if? So yes, you're paying a lot of money for insurance as an adult one day, but what if? It gives you peace of mind. That's what insurance is all about. That protection against loss, that peace of mind you have. Look at number 14 and read number 14 for us, Corey. here but we digest it little bits at a time we don't we don't look at it and say I don't know we don't look at it and be like ah. we don't look at it and give up we look at it like a real-life problem and say you know what I'm gonna figure this out so first of all we're paying for our car insurance every month we pay 150 bucks and it says for three years you do this before an accident happens how many months is that 36. so we start by just multiplying 36. 36 times the 150 or rather times the 15 we're gonna hang the zero aren't we so we multiply and we get don't forget about the hung zero we get five thousand four hundred dollars worth of premiums that we've already paid right so far so good that's money that we have lost if we want to class 
we can put a negative with that because it's lost money. It's money that is gone. Mm -hmm. So far, so good. When we cause the accident, how much do we have to pay? 500. 500, because that's our deductible. So we also lose 500 when we pay our deductible. So how much have we lost through premiums we've paid to insurance and deductible that we've, we have to pay? 5,900. We have lost, in a sense, or paid $5,900. Does that make sense? What do we save? Whatever insurance pays for is money you have saved. Does that make sense? So let's think about what we save. What does insurance pay for? Well, first of all, insurance pays for you to get a new car. You, when your car gets totaled, insurance get, estimates the value of your vehicle, and they give you that much money to go get a new one. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Your vehicle is valued at how much, class? 21300 Now, remember, you've got the 500 deductible. They don't give you the full 21300 They give you 500 less. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So what's 500 less than 21300 20800 So they're going to pay you that much money. You pay them the 500 deductible, they give you the 20800 Okay? Now, actually, you pay the 500 deductible, that takes off. So never mind, I'm sorry. I'm overthinking. Is that, that That's a double whammy. No, sorry. You pay the 500, they give the 21300 Yes, that, that is the 500 that you didn't pay. We already took that off. We don't need to take that off again. They also pay the other guy to get a new car. How much do they pay the other guy? 47500 47500 Plus, they pay for all their medical bills. How much are their medical bills? 24200 Now, you're responsible for your own medical bills. You cause the accident, you got to take care of your own medical bills. You can get like a med pay rider, but it's usually not much and it's not worth it. But you pay your own medical bills, but they'll take care of their medical bills. How much here is insurance paying? And it's a bunch. 93000 They end up paying... $93,000. Do you have $93,000? Probably not. You're glad you don't have to pay that. How much did you pay to get them to pay all this? $5,900. You paid $5,900. $5,400 in premiums plus the $500 deductible that you were obligated to pay. So how much did you really save? How much did you really save? All of them you got. Eighty-seven thousand one hundred dollars. Eighty-seven thousand one hundred dollars. We just subtract the five hundred dollars. Do we see how insurance works? The peace of mind. Again, it will feel. I promise you. Like keep paying all this money every month. There's a reason. One day you're probably going to need it. Even if you never do, just knowing it's there is beneficial to you. Questions on car insurance. So we feel like we have a basic understanding, not all the ins and outs, obviously, we have a basic understanding of how car insurance works. Mm -hmm. You'll never watch a Liberty Mutual commercial or Mayhem commercial again. I do like the Mayhem commercials too, by the way. All right, let's talk next about home insurance. Page 37, home insurance. When a person buys a home, he is usually required to buy home insurance. Now, when would you not have to buy home insurance? If you're paying for it outright, completely on your own, no mortgage, you just pay cash for this house. Technically, then you don't have to have it, but you'd be crazy not to, okay? So pretty much everybody has home insurance. If you have a mortgage, you have to, uh, because notice it says in this way, the homeowner and the bank or lender is protected from loss in the event of a disaster. Remember, if you have a mortgage, you don't own your home. The bank does. They're letting you live there while you pay them. If you stop paying them, they kick you out. <laughs> we call that eviction or um, re uh, not repo, that's cars. What's it called? Re uh, house. Foreclosure. Foreclosure, yeah, where they, where they kick you out of your house and they take it back, right? So uh, anyway, um, but you have to have the home insurance because if something happens, the bank doesn't want to lose their house, right? There, that's a lot of money the bank would lose. So you got to have home insurance. Home insurance pays for damages to a person's house or property, but the homeowner is responsible to pay an upfront amount for damages called the deductible. same term as car insurance. Deductibles, that upfront amount you pay. Coverage limits and deductibles are outlined in the homeowner's insurance oh. policy. Remember, that's the agreement where you agree how much insurance pays, how much you pay, all that stuff. Uh, usually, damage caused by wind or hail is covered with a separate deductible. 
Wind or hail usually has separate coverage because it's so common and they don't want to have to pay the big bucks. Uh, this may be a set dollar amount. It may be a percent of the replacement value of the home. So we'll kind of see that as we go through the practice problems. Minor damages may cost less, cost less than the deductible, right? So if your deductible is $2,000 and you have a broken window, well, broken window might cost you a few hundred to replace. You're not going to call insurance for that. Are you kidding me? You wouldn't even equal the deductible, right? Like if I had a minor, minor damage on my car and I had a $500 deductible and it would only cost me $200 to fix it, I'm not calling insurance for that. It wouldn't even cover anything, right? So sometimes, you know, it doesn't cost as much. But the homeowner, in that case, would simply pay the repairs rather than, we saw this term yesterday, filing a claim. claim. That's where you contact the insurance company and say, hey, this happened. I need your help. Make sense? Mm -hmm. It's called a claim. Rather than paying, now this is interesting. Rather than paying monthly premiums, or that's how much you pay for your insurance, directly to the insurance company, who does it say, class, these premiums are paid to? Follow along with me, people. We're on this third paragraph. Rather than paying monthly premiums directly to the insurance company, premiums are usually paid to the bank, bank, or, lender. bank or lender. When a homeowner makes his monthly mortgage payment, remember we said that's paying for your house, his payment consists of four parts. Highlight this or put underline this. The payment of the loan, the principal. That's one thing you're paying. Obviously, you're paying off the house. Interest payments. Duh, it's an amortized loan. So you're paying interest, which gets smaller every month, remember? That's how amortized loans work. So you're paying the payment of the principal. You're paying off interest. Property taxes. Property taxes are paid to your bank, not to the government. The bank pays the government on your behalf. So every month, they take money for property taxes. They set it aside. And when the government asks for it, they pay your property taxes for you. And your home insurance premiums. Every month, you pay home insurance premiums to your bank or your lender, whoever that is. And then when the insurance company once a year asks for it, they give the insurance company their money. Does that make sense? Some terms to note. These last two payments. What were the last two payments I just mentioned, class? Home insurance premiums. Home insurance premiums and property, property taxes. What are they? Home insurance premiums and property taxes. Home insurance premiums, property taxes. Those two payments are called escrow payments. Note that term. They're called escrow payments. These are collected by the bank or lender, set aside throughout the year until it's time for them to remit payments to the insurance company or the local government tax agency. For this reason, home insurance premiums are almost always listed as annual amounts. Car insurance, you pay directly to the insurance company, you pay it every month. Some people pay it every six months. Home insurance payments, they collect it at the end of the year or at some point, some month during the year, insurance will collect it, but they won't collect it from you. They'll sign the agreement with you, but they actually get it from the bank because you're paying the money to the bank. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the escrow is where they hold on to this money for you and they just take care of it. That way, you're not sending payments everywhere. One consolidated payment to the bank on your behalf. Okay, questions on home insurance. Well, let's figure it out as we work through some problems. Number one, read problem number one for us, Ben. My team, Samantha Smith, bought a house last month. They paid the bank $261.47 for the loan, $176.32 toward the interest, $108.12 for insurance, and $78.50 for property taxes. What was their total mortgage payment last month? I see some of you already set this up on paper. What do we have to do to figure out their mortgage payment class? Mm -hmm. Add all four things together. So on your paper, add all four numbers, write it down once you've got it. Add all four numbers. They're paying off the loan. They're paying off the interest. They're paying for their insurance. They're paying for their property taxes. How much total do they pay the bank to live in that house every year. And by the way, the big reason this has to be done, the bank can't afford for you not to pay property taxes. The bank has to make sure your property taxes get paid because it's actually their house, right? And they can't afford for insurance not to get paid because it's technically their house. So they're protecting themselves by collecting that from you. It's not just a convenience for you. They have to make sure they're covered. 
We add it all together. We got a few people with the answer, a few more people figuring it out. You got it, Luciana? Mm -hmm. All right, call it out. What you got? $734.41. Ooh, a little bit of an addition error there, Joel. $824.61. Oh, not that high. I think we might have a decimal in the wrong spot on one of those numbers, possibly. Um, Bryson? $636.41. Oh, you're the closest one yet. $624.41. There we go. Okay, $624.41. There we go. $624.41. All right, go and write that number in if you didn't have it before. $624.41 is what it should be when we add them all together. Now, number two just asks, what was just class their escrow payment last month? So their whole mortgage payment was $624.41. A part of that went into escrow, okay, is what it's called. How much was the escrow? Well, what do I need to do to figure that out, Elaine? Add the home insurance and the, <coughs> the um, property tax. Good, just add the insurance and the property taxes. Again, the bank collects the interest, that's how they make money. They're collecting the principal, that's how you begin to own more and more of the house. But the insurance and the property taxes are the set aside stuff, that's the escrow. And how much is that? Let's go back to Luciana for redemption. $186.62. That is correct. How many had $186.62? We add those two numbers. All right, go ahead and get that there if you didn't have it before. Number three. Number three. Read that for us, Bryson. Uh, if the insurance payment is the same every month, how much do Mr. and Mrs. Smith pay for? All right, so if their insurance payment every month is the same, which it would be for this year at least, how much do they pay each year? And by the way, insurance rates are going up. My home insurance is going up quite a bit this year over last year. We didn't have any issues. It's just inflation is driving everything up. Thank you, government. Uh, anyway, <laughs> can't blame one particular person alone. I mean, there's a whole Congress to blame for this too, but I digress. Uh, how much for a year do they pay for their homeowner's insurance? What do we have to do, Kirsten? Add. Add. Or multiply. Multiply. There we go. Multiply what? Um, 620. No, that would be their mortgage payment. for. That would be their total mortgage for a year. I just want their insurance for a year. So what are we multiplying? $186.62. That would be their total escrow for the year. But that included the property taxes, too. I just want their insurance for the year. $100. $8.12. There we go. you got to find that insurance number in problem one. Did you see that? The 108.12. That's what we multiply by 12. So if you didn't do that, fix it now. $108.12 is just for the insurance. So over the course of a year, how much does the insurance company get? Got some people fixing that now. Now that we understand that a little bit better. And Corey's got it. Corey, what you got? I'm not quite sure what happened. Maybe you've got a decimal error. I think there might be some other little thing, but I think you're a decimal place off somehow. I'm not sure how. Um, let's see. Joel is wanting some redemption from earlier. Joel, what you got? $1,329.44. Really close. Just a tiny nudge too high. I'm not sure what happened. Jalen? $1,297.44. $1,297.44. So somewhere in there, maybe a little addition error, maybe a carrying error. Uh, go ahead and get that number written down if you didn't have it. $1,297.44 every month for their homeowner's insurance. And again, that number was a little realistic when I wrote this, and I've realized just in the last couple months, that number is a little low now. Um, <laughs> so maybe it's a small house. All right, um, we move on to number four. So we've got that homeowner's insurance number. Everyone got that written down now, yes? All right, now we move on to number four. And what happens to Mr. and Mrs. Smith's house? Jalen, read for us. Mr. and Mrs. Smith have a deductible of $1,500 for wind slash wind or hail coverage on their home insurance policy. A recent hailstorm broke three windows. The cost to replace each window is $335. Should they file a claim with the insurance company, what will Mr. and Mrs. Smith have to pay? What, if anything, will the insurance company pay? All right. So the first question is, 
Is it worth filing a claim? Well, how much, what happened to the house? The hailstorm broke class three windows. three windows. And it says every window costs how much to replace it? $300. And there's three windows, right? So real quick, let's figure out how much damage is there. $335 per window, three windows class, we multiply. multiply. And how much total damage in terms of dollars was caused to their house? Joel. $1,005. $1,005. How many got $1,005? Okay, that's the damage. Now, what's their deductible class? $1,500. $1,500. Should they file a claim? Yes. No. 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 Because their insurance, remember, deductible is what you have to pay first before insurance will pay anything, right? Well, if their deductible is $1,500, that's more than the damage. Insurance isn't going to pay anything anyway. Why would you file a claim? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You file a claim, you risk them raising your rates because you now have a claim on your record. Don't do that if it's cheaper than your deductible. This, again, means you better know what your deductibles are, right? Now, usually when you call your agent, Jake from State Farm, mm -hmm. and you call and be like, hey, um, this happened, this is what it's going to cost. They'll actually run some numbers with you and tell you whether or not it's worth filing a claim. They'll usually try to help you with that. But again, if you know your own numbers, you do the, a little investigative work, find out, yeah, it's cheaper just to do it myself rather than getting insurance involved. So what will Mr. and Mrs. Smith have to pay class? $1,500. They got to pay the $1,500. Uh, what, if anything, will the insurance company pay? Nothing. 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 Zero dollars, right? Insurance company pays zero. They pay the thousand five. <sighs> Questions on that? All right, now let's read number five, and we'll contrast this with their neighbor who lives not too far down the street. Uh, let's have B -b 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 Kirsten read this one. The same hailstorm damaged Mr. and Mrs. Brown's roof. A new roof will cost $5,400. They have a 2% wind, wind or hail deductible, and their house is valued at $184,000. Should they file a claim with the insurance company, what will Mr. and Mrs. Brown have to pay? What, it, what if anything, will the insurance company pay? All right, so as I told you earlier, and I said we'd get into this, wind and hail deductibles class are sometimes a set amount, like in the Smith's case, $1,500, set amount. Sometimes it's a percentage of the house's total value. And that's what it is for Mr. and Mrs. Brown. Their policy is a little different. They may have a different insurance company, I don't know. But their wind hail deductible is 2% of the value of the house. Their house class is valued at 184 grand. And their deductible is what percent? 2%. So we need to multiply by 0 0.02. Or better yet, hang the three zeros and just multiply the 0 0.02. Don't forget your two decimal places after you multiply. Class, what is their deductible? $3,680. All right, everyone got that? Mm -hmm. That's what they have to pay. Now, notice that's a lot higher than the Smiths, isn't it? Mm -hmm. mm. That's their deductible. That's what they would have to pay before insurance pays anything, right? Mm -hmm. Well, how much damage did the house sustain? They need a whole new roof, and they got an estimate that said it's going to be $5,400 to replace that roof. Should they call insurance? Yes. 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 Because now the damage is greater than their deductible. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the first answer, should they file a claim? Yes. Number two, what will Mr. and Mrs. Brown have to pay? Nothing. Oh, yes, they will. Uh, yeah, Joel, go ahead. $3,680. they got to pay the $3,680, right? They have to pay the deductible. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, everything else, everything that's left over that still needs to be covered, insurance got this. So how much is insurance going to shell out? How much does the insurance company shell out? Remember, the, roof, the, the roofers, the roofing company says, going to cost you $5,400 for the new roof. You pay $3,680 to the roofers. Insurance comes in. They finish off the payment. Insurance ends up paying how much, Bryson? Uh, 
1,720. So deductible, this is Brown. What can Brown do for, anyway, Brown does the 3,680. Insurance pays, you said it was 1,720, right? Mm -hmm. So obviously who paid more of it? The, the Brown. Still the Browns ended up paying more of it, but hey, they saved 1720, right? They saved a little money or did they? Look at number six. Look at number six. Read that for us, Joel. The Browns pay 1724 each year for home insurance. Did the Browns save money this year by having home insurance? So their premiums for the year, 1724 How much did they save on the roof? 1720 That's what insurance paid for them. Did they make money or lose money that year? They lost how much money, class? Four dollars. Yeah, four bucks. <laughs> they lost four bucks. But you know what they had? Peace of mind knowing if it had been worse, they're covered. Right? What if instead of a hailstorm, what if the hail managed to, you know, somehow dislodge a, a tree limb or something? You know, the hailstorm was bad enough they lost, and a whole tree limb fell in the house and they had structural damage. Again, peace of mind is there. But in the net aggregate, yeah, they lost four bucks that year. All right, questions on that. Do we understand how home insurance works? Questions on all that. All right, real quick, if you look over at the next page, so flip the page over, your homework tonight, we're gonna review something we haven't looked at in a little while, so I wanna review something with you very quickly. Notice what it tells you to find on numbers one through six as a little bit of review. Class? Area. Area, oh, it's been a while. So let's review over some area formulas, shall we? The most basic shape of all is the rectangle. And class, what's my formula? Actually, let me call this someone's show of hands. What is the formula for the area of a rectangle? Luciana? A equals LW. A equals LW. Wouldn't hurt to write this in the side margin of your book there if you've forgotten these. Now, if you say, I know A equals LW, then don't bother. But if you're like, ooh, I forgot that, or I don't remember that, and this is something obviously we covered before Joel joined us. So Joel, you may or may not need to write these. I don't know, depending on what you got before you came here. Um, we had a slanty rectangle. We don't actually call it a slanty rectangle. What do we call this critter here, class? Parallelogram. Parallelogram. That's a great word. Parallelogram. And uh, volunteer area of a parallelogram. Jalen? A equals B, H. A equals B, H. The base, which is the length of the bottom, times the height, which is that perpendicular, or that altitude, as it's sometimes called. Uh, we also had uh, a nice easy figure called a square. What's the formula for the area of a square? Bryson? Uh, a equals four, no. You're thinking P oh, equals S. four S. S squared. S squared, there we go, side squared. Whatever one side is, just square it, and that's the area of the square. Uh, we had another figure. The, uh, let's see, it had a couple parallel lines, and it had a couple lines that aren't parallel. What do we call this trigger, class? Trapezoid. Trapezoid, so a trapezoid. And uh, let's see, area of a trapezoid, this was kind of weird, because we don't have like matching sides. Like here they match, they match, they match, they match, they match all over. Well here nothing matches. So what was that formula, Ben? A equals a half BH. Not a half BH, but there is a half in it. Mm, not as many hands this time, but I got a very exuberant birthday girl back there. A equals one half H times the quantity of the B1 plus B2. Yeah, so on this one here, remember, we've got two different bases they're called, base one and base two. We have to add those together first and then multiply by the height or the altitude and take half of that. Mm -hmm. See, I've been a little while for trapezoid. Now, Ben, what you gave me a moment ago was actually the formula for the area of a triangle. And what was that formula, Ben? A equals B. A equals half H B. Or B H if we keep them alphabetically, but it's not wrong if you did the amount of order because multiplication is commutative. There we go. So there's our base, there's our height, and so a half base times height. We also had, uh, it wasn't a polygon at all, pretend that's a circle. And uh, so for the area of a circle, what was that formula? Mm. Formula for the area of a circle. We have a day to celebrate uh, a critical number coming up here in about two weeks. 
I know it has pi. It has, it has pi, pi that you're right. What does it have with the pi? Pi r squared. Pi r squared. There we go. Pi r squared. Remember, class, pi is approximately 3.14. Or, what if there's a fraction? 22 seven. 22 seven. That only mattered if we had a radius or something. And remember, the radius is that length from the center of the circle out to the edge there. I think these are the six figures we talked about for area back last semester, so I want to make sure I reviewed that with you. Questions on these area formulas? Any questions as we've been talking through car insurance and home insurance the last couple days, you say, there's just one thing I'm confused about, Ms. Jasky. What about this? Have there been any questions? We've got just a couple minutes before we need to go. Any questions on this that we need to go over? How many feel like you have a pretty decent understanding of how this works with the deductibles and the premiums and all of that stuff? All right. Well, we'll finish a couple minutes early and get a head start on the homework. Maybe you can even knock out that top section before we go. Your homework is to do page 38, numbers 1 through 11. Oh, real quick. Don't forget on all of these areas, class, what are your units going to be? Um, it's square. It's square. square units. So it could be inches squared. It could be meters squared, feet squared, centimeters squared. But don't forget, you may want to jot this down, square units. All right. When the bell rings will be dismissed, but you have just a couple minutes to get started on your homework.